Hello beauties, I hope everybody is having an amazing day. I am here today to talk about my April favourites. I cannot believe April is gone and that we are into the fifth month. It actually blows my mind because every time I think that I moved back home to New Zealand in November and now it is May, it is insane. Like when you have that moment in time that you're like really comparing it to, I think time just flies and it is crazy, unbelievable. <sighs> yeah. Okay, that moment's gone. So, I'm going to talk to you today about some of the things I've been loving in April. I really like these kind of videos because even for me to look back on and to see the products I was really loving is kind of like nostalgic and then I might pick them up again and, you know, think, oh, I was really loving that. What happened to it? So, I have a few products today. They're all basically makeup related. There's one hair product, so that's not very surprising. But now that it is getting a little bit cooler and my skin color seems to be fading, I'm picking up a few new products that... I really like to try out and that look a lot better as my skin is getting a little bit paler. So without further ado, I'm going to start with base. So if you've been watching my videos lately, you'll know that I'm a massive fan of Becca. I think this is the ultimate coverage complexion cream. It's so hard not having it in its original bottle because I can never remember the name. And I have the shade Nude, which is obviously a far too dark for me at the moment. So I always mix in some of my custom cover drops by Cover FX in the shade G20 just to bring it down to this kind of shade but I just love this foundation the coverage is beautiful it is very buildable so you can make it quite a full coverage like I kind of have today you can also share it out a little bit you don't need a lot it spreads really evenly it's not patchy you don't get oily it's super easy to apply with a beauty blender or even like a flat top kabuki brush and I just think it is amazing, especially going into the winter months. And like I said, if you are going into like the summer months or into spring, um, you can share it out. So it is equally comfortable to wear like that. Pretty much every time I've done my makeup, I've used the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer and I love it like so, so much. I've had this in my collection for so long. Not long enough to be expired, but long enough that I cannot believe I haven't been using it. In all the tutorials I've done, I'm pretty sure I've used this or the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. Um, this is amazing. I'm in love with it. I have kind of dry skin, but I can get oily in my T-zone, so this works perfect if you're kind of semi-combination. You really want that flawless base and you want your makeup to stick, but it's not going to make you shiny. It's going to help prevent oil, so it is amazing all over the scale. Again, kind of annoying that I've taken it out of its little pump, but I've labelled it as you can see, super handy. Okay, so moving on to sort of like a highlight, I've really been obsessed with using that primer sort of most of my face, not my cheekbones or like the bridge of my nose, and instead um, on those places, again I've decanted this product, um, I've been using the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector and this is in Opal, it's one of their liquid highlighters. It is absolutely stunning and what I do, I'll kind of show you a little bit on the back of my hand so you can see. So I don't know if you can see that but it's just the most gorgeous kind of rose gold shimmer and it looks absolutely stunning. I put it on my cheekbones, I put a little bit on the bridge of my nose, the tip of my nose, basically anywhere that I'm going to put a powder highlight later just to intensify the highlight and make it look a lot more like it's coming from within rather than just put on top of the makeup. And I just absolutely love it. Today I actually mixed some in with the Becca foundation as well. So I had the Becca foundation, I had the custom um, cover drops, and then I also put a little bit of the Shimmering Skin Perfect and I mixed it all up and then applied it with a damp beauty blender. And I think it is beautiful, I think it is very glowing, I think it is very fresh, and I just love the finish. So that's probably going to be happening a lot more in the future, so look out for that. And then on to powders. I basically have had this powder again for quite a while, but now that my skin tone is getting a little bit lighter, I pulled it out again. It didn't really show up on my skin when I was tanned over summer, but it is the most gorgeous, gorgeous shade. It is the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder, and this is in the shade Bronze 01. It is gorgeous. I've seen quite a few people using a particular MAC shade, a MAC bronzer, and I was looking through my collection to see if I had anything similar. It is a very warm toned bronzer. So it's definitely kind of got a terracotta undertone, but I really like that at the moment. I've been applying it with a large powder brush. I'll show you the one I've got. Now this isn't my favourite, but I really like the shape. Um, I got it when I went to makeup school, 
It is basically a big powder brush, but I really like that it is quite narrow there. So when you're kind of putting it onto your face like that with the bronzer, it's not ending up down here, which I really like. It's quite precise, but again, it is big, so it is giving you that kind of like all over glow. So I use that brush with that product, and I really, really like it. I think it is just super gorgeous for this time of the year. The name of this product is quite confusing because it's kind of weird that you can have a matte radiant bronzer. Like, that doesn't really make sense. It kind of contradicts itself. But basically what it is, is it's not a flat bronzer. It is matte, but it is not flat. It still has that glow without having pigmented bits of highlighter through it or pigmented bits of shimmer that give you that kind of, I don't know, sparkle that's obvious, I guess. So it's really nice and it'd be perfect for like a natural look as well. I don't know if I mentioned this one last month, but it is like my absolute favorite highlighter out of anything I own. I love this highlighter. I'm probably going to pick up a second one soon because I broke the lid off the top which is really lame and it's got like a shallow crack going through so I'm just like praying for the day that it doesn't actually break but I love this highlighter it again is from Laura Mercier it is a matte radiance baked powder but this one is in the shade highlight 01 it's so stunning like it's the perfect there but not their highlighter. It doesn't have like particles of glitter. It's just this beautiful like smooth glow. That's basically how I would describe it. It just looks like this flawless pigmented glow and it just blends into the skin really nice. It is a lot lighter based and a lot more sort of like I don't know pale based I guess than the opal so you can really see the difference there but it is gorgeous. You can apply this everywhere and it just looks magical basically. Another highlighter I really like and I'm wearing this one today. This is the Kim and Kwon, the Celestial Powder in Starlight. It is stunning. It is like a pink toned highlighter. I think that the Kim and Kwon highlighters are beautiful. This one I find more intense on me than Candlelight. Again I'm going to put it next to the other two highlighters so you can see. So there you go. It's definitely more pink than the Opal. A lot more pink than the Laura Mercier highlight but it's just beautiful it kind of acts semi as a blush on me so I've got it there and I've got like a really nude blush on so it kind of gives that pop of color without having to put a pinky toned blush but again it has just got the perfect amount of pigment it's definitely got a little bit more um sort of like shimmering particles than the Laura Mercier but with the formula it just blends super well into the skin and I love it it's stunning this colour in particular, I probably wouldn't put sort of like on the centre of my face. I don't do my chin, my nose, or the tip of my nose with it. Just because it is pink toned, it can look a little bit funny. So sort of on the centre of my face, if there's any highlighting, it will be the Laura Mercier because it looks a lot more natural in colour, so it just blends in a little bit better. Also for a bit of glow, can you tell that I'm like obsessed with glow? Like I love that natural look with like the super glowing skin and like nude lips and kind of like the nudie toned eyes so I've really been liking this Hourglass palette it is the ambient lighting palette and the shade I've been obsessed with is Radiant Light which is this one basically at the end of my makeup I'll just take maybe like that brush I showed you before put a little bit on the brush and then I'll just like sweep it over as like a finishing touch and because it is like a bronzed powder it really just kind of pulls the look together so you can see it there you can definitely see it's a lot more of a tan powder. I definitely wouldn't put this all over my face, but it is a great top up to a bronzer just to give it that really seamless blended glow. Love it, love it, love it. I also have it in full size, so I am stocked for a while. For face powder, I've really been obsessed with the Bourjois Happy Balance Powder. This is in the shade 52 Vanille. I love it. I think it is just the perfect powder it is really affordable and if you're in New Zealand I googled it the other day and I think you can actually purchase bourgeois at some of the farmers I think it's Lambton Key you can and I know you can do it on Queen Street I haven't physically seen it myself but according to the website that's what it said but it is just a beautiful finely milled powder it's got a slight yellow undertone so it's very brightening it's not cakey it's just like the perfect powder and I actually like it more than my hourglass diffused light which there's a big price difference between those two and that's saying something because I was obsessed with that and this this is like my new I love it and I recommend it to everyone so moving on to eyebrows ever since I dyed my hair a little bit darker I don't know if you can see it in this light but 
I went like a berry ombre so I got it darker at the roots and then sort of more of like a berry tone red going basically from there down just as a bit of a change you know going into winter I thought it would be kind of fun and also it helps with regrowth and um and the fact that you don't really see it as much as you could before so I've been using a new eyebrow product I've had this for a long time and this is the MAC mystery eyeshadow um it is just the most beautiful brown shade I'm wearing it now I think it just works really really well it's cool toned enough but it's not ashy and it still has a tiny bit of warmth to it it depends on your skin tone um it always changes like person to person but the pigment and the amount you don't need a lot it just works with my zoe the brow line brush beautifully it's just good doesn't look patchy stays in place can't sing its praises enough so yeah if you've got similar hair color to me I would definitely recommend trying this one out um, you won't be disappointed and I've got one eyeliner to show and this is the NARS night series eyeliner I'm pretty sure it's still available I hope so it's in the shade night porter it is a beautiful dark green color I've used this in one of my previous videos I think it was the sultry green and orange smoky eye potentially I love it so much. They're so pigmented, they're so creamy, they last really well on the waterline, they're really good to blend onto the lower lash line from the waterline and they just last all day. So it's that colour and it's like an iridescent brownie green and I just think it is so stunning. It is my favourite eyeliner that I own and I often just smudge it into the outer corner and a little bit on the um, waterline just to define my eyes if I'm going for a more natural look. Or I'll go harder in the waterline and blend it onto the lower lash line as well if I'm going for like a more smoky look. So stunning. Love it. Super creamy. It's just perfect. I need to try the purple one. I've got the purple one as well. But I haven't gotten around to trying it. So lips. I have been either predictable or boring this month because the lip colours I've got are basically all the same and I'm just obsessed with that colour. I love like this lip color at the moment I follow people on um, Instagram if they have variations of this lip color because I just think it is stunning it is really easy to wear it is very easy to maintain throughout the day so I went out the other weekend and I wore might have been this lip combo I can't really remember it was I know I was wearing the stripped down liner and it just lasted all night and even as it did start to fade you couldn't tell so it's so much more low maintenance and like a red or a bright colour and I just think it goes with every look and I finally found the nude that I think suits me I used to get a lot of pink toned nudes I didn't even know I was doing it I didn't even know what to look for and when I look back and I try them on my hands I just think what was I thinking I really like the tan sort of terracotta nudes on my own skin tone I just think it's a lot more flattering um, the first one I'll talk about is the Revlon cream lipstick and this is in the shade Brazilian Tan I've probably mentioned this a thousand times. It is my absolute favourite lipstick ever. It is just, it just goes with everything. It is so beautiful. Where am I going to put this? I can even wear this on like no makeup days, like when I was travelling last year and I was on the plane and I just wanted to look a little bit put together but I wasn't wearing any other makeup. I would just put this on and it would still look amazing and it would really just tie the look together. So I think it is just so stunning. It is majorly comfortable. It stains your lips slightly, so they still look like they've got a lot of colour to them, even as the product itself wears off. But oh, it's literally like favourite, favourite, favourite. It comes with me everywhere. It's always in my handbag. And with that, I will either wear it by itself, or I have been mixing it with the MAC Strip Down Liner. I think this is like my favourite liner. It is so stunning. It is super creamy. It's quite dark. What I've been doing is I've been kind of like lining my lips and then colouring in just the outer, sort of like the outer sides and then I've been applying the um, Revlon lipstick all over. I absolutely love this combination. I will also wear the MAC lip liner by itself. It lasts really well. I think it's so worth the money so I need another one of these soon because it's getting a little bit, a little bit short. Got a while ago. But it's my favourite. I wear this with like all my nude lipsticks. I love it. Another nude liner that I have discovered recently is the Kim and Kwon liner and this is in the shade of medium. It's not as brown toned as stripped down. You can kind of see it's a little bit more mauve-y pinky but oh, I love it. 
it's definitely a more natural colour. Um, strip down does look quite pigmented on my lips, but this one, yeah, it brings it home a little bit more. It's really nice. Still definitely in the warm tone family. I love it to death. I mean, look how tiny it is. It's like a midget. I love it so, so much. And that one also goes really well with this one, which is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream. This is in the shade London. This is my favourite matte lipstick. It is a beautiful light nude shade. Again, you can see it's got a really warm undertone. So I either wear London with strip down or I wear it with medium. Um, I love them both. And oh, I need another one of this. It's my favourite ever matte lipstick and definitely my favourite from the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream range. It's so wearable and again, this is always in my handbag as well because even if a lipstick colour wears off that I have been wearing, I just chuck one of these on over the top and I'm good to go. So, oh, that little quad. It's just my faves. Alright, so the last favourite is a hair favourite. So I have been a frequent user of Moroccan oil for like years. I've always bought it, always gone back to it, um, and I recently finished using it and I thought... I really wanted to try a natural, like 100% organic, pure, certified, what is it, um, virgin, cold pressed argan oil because I've heard that Moroccan oil, as good as it is, and I still do really like it, it's obviously got other things mixed in and I feel like it can be a little bit silicony sometimes and I've heard some things, you know, from people that tell me about the ingredients. So I just thought I'd try straight from the source sort of thing. So I bought this off Go Native New Zealand. They have a website called Go Native .co.nz. I just googled like New Zealand um, like essential oils and oils. This is amazing. I absolutely love it. You don't even need much. It's like I just take the cap off. I put my hand over it and I go and basically whatever's on the palm of my hand or on my fingers that's all I'll use on one side of my hair and then on the other side I will do the same. Now I've been using this. I got a new hair dryer and I've been using it to blow out my hair with a round brush and oh my god guys it is so much softer. Like before, I used to pump so much Moroccan oil on each side of my hair while it was wet, while it was being blow dried, after it was being blow dried. And it's insane how much product I probably went through. But with this, I used the tiniest amount and my hair is so, so soft. So I can't wait to see what this is like in the long run. I've only been using it for about a week, but I love it so much. I have been in love with the Morphe Brushes Palette in 350. It is freaking amazing if I go anywhere like to stay at someone's house and we're going out or even today this is what I've used on my eyes. It is just the best palette. It just has everything you need and to get this shimmery color today I used my finger which gives the most effective amount of pigment. I just think this palette is amazing. There is a new website in New Zealand. I think that's called La Femme. La Femme. Something like that. And I think they stock Morphe. I'm not sure if they stock the 350, but you should definitely check it out and give it a Google because it's good to have a New Zealand stockist as well. But, oh, this palette is amazing. And if you're not, like, crazy into makeup, but you really love doing your makeup every day, this would be, like, a perfect go-to palette that's just got all these beautiful warm colours. And, like I say, I'm a real warm-toned person. So, with my lipsticks, with my eyeshadows, I really, really love it. It is just... I just, oh, I just don't feel the need to buy more eyeshadows. If I did, I'd probably just buy more Morphe palettes because you get so many for a really good price. So, bargain. Really love that. And now, officially, that is the end of my favourites. I really hope you guys um, liked the products. Like I said, it's like a bronze glow up in here. It's all the warm tones. It's all a mix of summer. It's a mix of autumn. It's like, I don't even know what I'm up to. So... I'll blame Instagram for that because Instagram just makes you find so much inspiration and just all these beautiful pictures. So that is my favourites. I really hope you enjoyed it. And apart from that, I will see you in my next video. Bye. If you want to check out any of my latest videos, just click the video here. Bye.